Hello and welcome back to Anchors TV. I'm delighted to be joined by Stockton Town midfielder Shane Henry. Shane, thank you for joining me for this interview. How have the last few months been for you? Uh, yeah, thank you, um, Jamie. The, the last few months have been, well, they were fine, um, knowing that we had football. Um, but obviously, uh, the change of events have led to um, another, yet yeah, another pause, another stop start, another null and void season. So, um, it's just, we have to accept it really and just, just move on. Um, so, disappointing really not to, to finish the season um, and to get anything from it, but um, already looking forward to, to what's round the corner and we can eventually um, start up again. Obviously, you've only been here a few months and you've only really played 12 or 15 games so far. How have you found Stockton Town so far? Um, to be fair, yeah, I think the level's quite deceiving. Um, obviously, coming off the back of quite a long time playing in the um, Evo stick and the National League North, you're, um, you you think that the levels below at times are, can be can be easy, but the, the not the levels. I mean, for the top six to eight sides, the levels good, um, and there's some like really really good sides who 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 are competing, um, and obviously competing trying to win win the league and get promotion. So I think uh, initially I was a bit like, oh, what what I was like, what will what will this level be like? And then once I've started, um, I realised that it's a decent level and there's a lot of of good sides and a lot of good footballers in it. It's been a while since you've really experienced this level of football. How much has it changed in the last couple of years, do you think? Uh, uh, I think I've always kept tabs on what's going on in, in, like, at the North League and seeing how Stockton are getting on. Um, and I hadn't played in it till, like, for, for eight years. Um, so when I, when, I, when I did come back down, it was, like, um, it was nice to go back to some of the grounds I hadn't played at since I was, like, 20, uh, 21 year old. So... Um, and it's like quite new for me now, so I'm looking forward to playing at places that I played when I was obviously a lot younger. But yeah, it's um, uh, it's it's a level that you can get found out if you're not playing at your best. And um, obviously, we've been trying to maintain that. Well, we're maintaining that on a great run actually until until we were stopped. Yeah. Going back to the start of your career, what sort of inspired you to get into football and what were your ambitions when first starting off? Um, I think I just always played football um, and I was never quite like an academy graduate where I had a good chance of playing like at a like a professional club. I was always one of those who just played in the like the top end of a of a TGFA side. Um and then obviously from 18, I, I went to Gisborough. Um, and then from there, I've just sort of gone up the leagues with clubs that I've been at and the non league. So I think you, you always find your level, whatever, like whatever sport you do. So you can't, obviously, the, everybody wants to be a professional footballer, but it's very few and far between for those who make it. So I just think that everyone eventually finds a level. Um, and thankfully, man was well. I found my level playing non-league, and I've been pretty successful at it. So, and f- you, football just is it's a part of obviously my life, and it has been for years. So, um, just playing whatever level would be would be fine anyway. You moved up to Whitby Town in 2012, making 86 appearances. How did you find your time at the club? Yeah, I was. Um, I think I went to Billingham Symphony from Gisborough and um, I, Whitby obviously put seven days in, so I went there for a year and played everywhere, like left back, right back, eventually got in the side in midfield with Tom um, and then did two years there, was, did, did pretty well to be fair and then I was going to go, I was going to go back to Gisborough actually with um, Chris Hardy at the time because I'd worked with him prior but um Jason Ainsley rang me and said, look, I want you to come to Spenny So just for the levels, like I just tried to stay as high as I could for as long as I could. So Spenny seemed like the right option. And I was, it's quite pleasing that I joined, they just won the Vars the year before. And 
um, we got free promotions in those five years. So it was it was almost like the quest for a wave, really. It was nice. And um it was it, it's always nice when you play and you win things. So it was it was a good club to join. And it, it wasn't easy at the start because they were they were all winners. So as a new boy, you like you have to just find your place. And thankfully, after about the usual 10 games, I was I was in the side and uh held the shirt for a few years, yeah. When you first joined Spenny Mood, did you find yourself lifting your own level to try and fit into that winning side? Yeah, I think the dressing room there when I first started was the toughest I've ever been in because I went and they're all serial winners. They won the Northern League for years, they'd won cups, they'd had, um, like I said, just come off the back of the FA Vars run. So it was quite a daunting task at first, even getting on the bus at times with like knowing where to sit, which is which was quite hard work. But I think once they knew um, my role in the side and they knew me as a person, a footballer, there was, it got easier. And then um, I was always the one who tried to make it easier for the lads to come in because I knew how hard it was initially. But I think having that culture is not a bad thing. Um, and it always makes you as a player want to impress and obviously um do the best for the team. So, yeah, it was a it was a tough start there, to be fair, yeah. In your first season at Spenny Moore, you took on local rivals Darlington in the playoff semi-final, coming out on the losing side, sadly, 3-2. But how did you find that game? Was it quite intense? That was a, a wonderful game to play. That was... Um, Mikey scored a worldie, to be fair. I thought we were on top in that game. I think we were on top. Um, and But... We got they so I think we had a keeper um who did us a favour and did really well. Um but they just it was just like um two good sides going at it. We matched each other up and it wasn't a very good game to watch, but obviously they got um they got the result in the end and they deserved it. But I think um that just gave us a bit more of a, a scope to go again next year. And I think if I'm right in saying we went up the year after after that um Obviously, disappointment. We just went again and, and got promoted. And Darlington went on to beat Bamber Bridge in the final. Was there an element of thinking what could have been after that game? Yeah, because we beat Bamber Bridge twice um, in that season. Um, and we knew it would be a tough place, tough game, because they were, they were, they were a good side um, at the time. So we always thought, and in, in our mindset was, look, get past Darlington, and we've got a real chance of getting promoted. And... Unfortunately, it wasn't to be. But like I said, fair play to down in the um, those knockout comp, like sort of knockout style games. It, it, any it, anyone can win it. As you've noted, Spennymoor went on to win promotion the season after again finishing in the playoffs. Was there an extra element of we want to win this? We want to get through this time. Yeah, we 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 were obviously knocking on the door the year before, and the the club was wanting the promotions. Um, and it was more nervy that one. I remember that 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 game. That was um, the first year. Was like, oh, can we get in the playoffs? And then the year after was like, right, we we've, we should be favourites to go up. Um, and we got there in the end. And I, I think reflecting now, I'd always prefer to go up through the playoffs because you get them extra games and you get the crowds in. Um, the season's done, but you're still playing the playoffs. So yeah, it was. Um, it was a good moment that getting the promotion to the National League North. Do you think having that home advantage after last season losing away from home, do you think that home advantage gave you that extra little bit of motivation going into it? Yeah, if, if I think um, it was Queen, Vic, Queen, Vic, Queen Victoria, Queen Vic Victoria, I think we played. Uh, I think we won 1-0. Um, was it that game or was that Sourbridge? I think one of us. Was it Northwich in the semi-finals, then Starbridge in the final? I think. Or yeah, so, yeah. All right. So it had been Starbridge. So Starbridge was awful. We were so happy we played at home because going there it was um, the, the pitch wasn't great and it was quite uh, quite narrow and they had a lad who threw it a mile. So and it was quite effective up there. And but we just we just scored at the right time. I think uh, Robbie Ramshaw scored a great goal. Um, has to keep we signed the year after actually. Um so that was a, a bit of a laugh at training. But it was just once we won it up, I thought we, we we had enough in the tank. And I think our keep made a huge Dan Lowson made a huge save towards the end of the game off the free kick. But 
yeah, that was a special moment that going out in into spending more after, obviously to um quite a community club or like I think five percent of the town goes to the game. So that was um yeah, a special moment for sure. Last season in the Northern Premier League, the club made it all the way to the first round of the FA Cup. What were your memories of that cup run? Um I think it was just we just had a year where we were just um had no fear against what position we were playing against. So in the end we got to MK Dons and the biggest downfall there was they've got a twenty thousand odd capacity stadium, there's only about three thousand fans in. So there's just rows of um empty black seats. Um we had a a good following from Spenny Moore, who were making a load of racket in the corner. And a lot of my mates came through and I stayed over and went out in Milton Keynes. But that's a shocking bus journey, that to travel there in the day. Um a real like long, long journey. But um it was a we we, we started poorly, we were 3-0 down and we got it back to 3-2. But that was when you're like, wow, these players who were playing professionally are just straight ahead because they just ran rings around you and you just couldn't get near any of them really. Um so sharp and short tech so technical but it was a good eye opener and a good experience and obviously it's nice to say that I've played in the first round proper Do you find with those professional players there was an extra half a yard yard of like pace and space that they found? I just think that everything that they do was is just so finely tuned because of the nature of their training they train every day so you'd like to think if you were training full time that you would be able to have Better, uh, like great fitness levels and you'd be better technically but I think also with that they have good pitches in the brain so the the, the often steps ahead of what's going on and and particularly the forward freeze movement was was really 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 good so it was it, like I said it was an eye opener they're at that level for a reason um and we it was just nice for us to compete we got a big huge dressing room um to walk out with fans, which was nice. Um, it was good, good experience, yeah, definitely. And you got the assist for the the first consolation goal. Did you think at three one maybe we had a chance to pull this back? Uh, you never say never in football. Um, there was always there was always that right. Let's go again. We got it at three two, and I think we had some chances um, to make it three all. But we we the game was done after. The first 10 minutes, the 15 minutes being 3 0 down, and we we're always chasing our tail. So it was nice to um, just let them know they were in a game for that 15, 20 minute period where we were, where it was 3 2. And obviously, you went on to finish in the playoffs again that season. Do you think having that experience of finishing in the playoffs the previous two seasons helped you out that season? Yeah, big star. I think you need that experience to, to, to get you out of those sort of games because. You can you can be the best side all season. It doesn't make a difference when you get to the playoff games because it's 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 a one off game. So there's very little football played. It's right. Let's get the ball in the right areas and try and affect the game higher up the pitch. So it was the more scrappy because it's a bit more nervy and everyone obviously has aspirations of winning. So, but that experience helped us, yeah, for sure. In the first season in the National League North, Spenny Moore finished eighth. Do you think it was difficult to adapt to a new higher division? Yeah, I really struggled. Really struggled. Um, I remember coming on the first game against Stockport um, and I received the ball in a tight area and next thing you know, I've, it's been pinched off me. Dave broke, slid in the um, left wing and, and my mate Griffey's brought the, the lad down um, for a pen. Thankfully, he missed the pen, but it was like, wow. Um, it's just the nature of of that league. It was just fast pace, especially the start of the season. Everyone's fitting on it, and it was a big game because it was Stockport, and there's a lot of fans in. Um, and it probably took me about 10 to 15 games before I got in the side. And then I just realised what I had to bring to the, to the team, really. And it was more about... The, the the second balls and the and the getting around people and the support and the, the striker when I could get forward but it was um it's not a I would never I would never underestimate that level because I got a shock big style the first year and then like I said over the time 
of the three, four seasons I got, I would say I was a quite well-established um, midfielder in that league. Again, spending more finished in the playoff places ne- next season, finishing fourth. Do you think it was, again, the experience of having the playoffs that helped you go into that, them games? Yeah, experience always helps. Um, Bradford, Bradford Park Avenue it was, wasn't it, in the playoff game? I don't think I played at the time. Um, I might have had an injury. I wasn't there, but I know we got beat in the playoffs. Or, um, or we got we didn't get there because of goal difference, wasn't it, one year? It was a year after they'd be playing the playoffs. Someone beat us, I'm not sure. Um, lost Whether to Char- Charlie on penalties in the playoff final that season. Oh, right, I see. So that's a year after, yeah. So yeah. we'd obviously been around the playoffs and we knew we were... Um, we went. I had my appendix out at the time. So I played... We played Charlie and we beat him 2-0. And then the Monday morning, I, got, I went home from work and I was in the hospital. Um, and I got my appendix out, so I missed that playoff. I missed the playoff venture. I missed the playoff semi in the playoff final. I was there obviously in good spirits, but yeah, I missed I missed out there because I had my appendix um, removed. So obviously that was disappointing. And then obviously you were just, we beat Bracky in the penalty shootout and then we got another penalty shootout and you thought one kick away from the, the obviously the, the National League at the time. Um, but as football is, it wasn't to be. But I'm sure as a club, obviously they've recruited really well and, the football's a mess at the minute, but they'll not be far away from the National League, I don't imagine, the next year. So, Sadly, last season ended early for COVID pandemic reasons. Was it disappointing that you left Spennymoor on the back of an uncompleted season? No, because I'd had in my mindset, um, I'd had in my mindset that I was 29, touching 30, there was a contract there to spend him over for another year with an option, which would take me to 31. And I can't see myself playing really past what, 35, um, depending on how I, how I am. But there was a good opportunity because it was my option year and it was my... No, no, it wasn't. It was my option year, so the choice was mine to move um, move on. And I'd spoke to Michael in the past and with family circumstances changing, having a um, little baby girl, it, it just made sense at the time. So... I was delighted when the club obviously could make it happen. Um, and obviously I've, I'll miss the the success here at Spenny, but like I've said in the past, um, I feel like this club's going to be on on, a, on another crest of a wave and I want to be a part of the success for the next three to five years, hopefully, and get this club knocking on the door of the Evo Sick Premier. Um, everything's in place. There's... A well-run club with an excellent chairman, good management team, um, infrastructures there, uh, sponsorships there for us to to progress. So, and then obviously the fan base and the community, which is good, just going to continue to grow. So, it made sense, and I always had in the back of my mind that I would play for Stockton again, um, my hometown club. I know a lot of the lads are there, uh, all of my mates, which which is which it which helps and. Um, we just when when we can just look to achieve the ambitions that we have. Obviously, the season is currently suspended. Once the worst of this is over and we can continue playing football, where do you see the next three to five years at Stockton Town going? So I would hope um, it's on camera now. I would hope that in the next three to five years, there's two promotions in there. So into the Evo Stick East League or whatever it is, and then really having a good go at the getting promoted in the national uh, sorry conference uh, Evo Stick Premier so that would be where I'd like to be in the three to five years I'm here I'm going to try my best to 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 get the club there as will the rest of the lads who are signed because it's what we want um, it's a real togetherness to do that so that would be nice at 35 to hang up their boots and Go and watch Stockton play um, in the Evo Stick Premier Year for sure. Over the last ten years, how would you say your your game has adapted? What's different about your game now to when you were twenty? Uh, I used to run more. Um, I used to 
run for the sake of running. Now it's a bit more disciplined. Um, I just think you, the big thing for me is I've just learned to manage the games better. So I haven't always been somebody who, who runs football matches, um, who dictates a play, um, like like a Porter does for us or a Jordan does. I, I, I like to do the running off the ball, the getting in behind. And on the back foot, obviously, with my with my headers, my second balls, and free up the more creative players. So I think over time that's what I've found my role as. Um, I'm pleased at Stockton that I've been given a bit more freedom to get forward, and I'd like to to think after this mess I can convert convert more of my chances, and um, because I'm getting in good areas, and I just think you find the best fit. So. You, you you know what you're good at and your management knows what you're good at so it's just you just play at your strengths and that's all you can do and who would you say the teammate is you've enjoyed playing alongside the most um i mean i've played with most of the, most of them in the past so i suppose this the answer to this one's just playing with them again so you 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 play with nathan at whitby with Ports at whitby might get played with a gisbra um, Kev came to Spenny for a little while, so it's just nice to 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 play with them with them players again, really. And finally, what what are your thoughts on Project Non League? That's the systems going around that it would promote the best performing clubs and would relegate nobody. Do you think that's the fairest system to go about things? Yeah, but I think with any decision, there's going to be um, yes and no's, isn't there? There's going to be people who agree and disagree, so. I'm thankful it's not my decision to make. I think the FA have got a big decision. Um, the club itself deserves a promotion after the last two years. Um, and I think we're on the project non-league where we're projected to go up and get promoted and which we'd take, um, would snap the hands off really. So listen, at the end of the day, it's, it's them who were paid all the money to, to make them decisions. But if the, if it happens, we'd be delighted. But we we you can't get your hopes up because it's all ifs and buts. But yeah, if if it come comes about that we get promoted, we'll be delighted. All right, thank you for joining me this evening, Shane. Yeah, no bother, mate. Thanks, Jamie. All right, stay safe, and hopefully we'll see you on the pitch again in the yeah, near see future. See you soon, Jamie. Thank you, mate.